Welcome. My name is Debbie and this is Pouring My Art Out for the Lord. And today I am working on a design team project for the Junk Journal Studio. And if you haven't already heard, um, the Junk Journal Studio has released a new kit just in the last couple of days. It's called Botanical Collage and Cluster Mega Pack. So it's green and neutral um, pages. There's 43 pages. Um, so it's a huge mega kit again, mega pack. Um, I made some paper clips just to, to kind of try out some of the elements. I did not make a video for this yet, but if you're interested in seeing a video for this, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll do a quick video. It's not that complicated, but just um, these little banner paper clips with some of the images, some of the tags and labels and really, really beautiful images here. And I love the colors. I just love the colors. A little bit of uh, oranges and kind of yellows in it as well. So I'm going to make another little project today. Super easy, simple. <clears throat> I've made these before, but not for a while. So I thought I would make a, a video. Um, I printed out several pages. One, two, three, four, five, six pages of kind of the backgrounds. So there's greens and browns. I already snipped some of the part off the top there, but she's got them in groups of three here. Just nice textures, colors, different things. So that's perfect for what I'm going to make today. And then I also printed out several pages of, you know, the Junk Journal Studio labels. They're, they have the best labels. She's got fussy cuts, so birds and uh, mushrooms, uh, greenery, more greenery. There's butterflies and more birds. And then there's this um, shape of a label. <clears throat> so she's got a few different pages of, what is that, uh, octagon? One, two, three, four, yeah, an octagon. So octagon in different sizes. There's some more labels. The labels are in green, brown, and then some kind of a little bit of a multi color of these sorts of things. Um, some more butterflies. <coughs> and then she's got little bits of ephemera pieces. So, you know, calendars and the big labels and different things like that. And she has um, pretty much everything in different sizes. There's tea cards. Um, in the kit as well. I didn't print any of those out yet. So this was just a few pages that I, I printed out and cut out. So I'm just going to, oh, and then I made, um, I'm going to make little journal cards and tags. So I took a piece of 12 by 12, um, just, this was just some green card stock that I had and I cut it into, um, journal cards by, uh, that are three inches by four inches. So three by four, then you can get 12 for, yeah, 12 for, you can get 12 of them for one um, piece of 12 by 12. And then I also made um, tags and these are three by six. This is kind of the standard Tim Holtz um, size tag. So I like to use the, the three by six quite often. So then there will be um, four times two, eight eight tags out of one 12 by 12. So I used two pieces of 12 by 12 and just cut down. These are just going to be the bases. Boom. But you can do it. You can use anything you want. That's just what I'm using. And then I just cut some random sized um, strips from the uh, six pages that I showed you. So I'm going to make a couple and then uh, I'll make some more off camera and then I will... Uh, um, maybe show you a little bit how to decorate some of them and then I'm not going to make you watch me do all of these ones. I'll do, I'll do maybe one of each on camera and then I'll show you a little bit of the decorating at the end and show you the final, the final projects at the end. So I'm just going to use a glue stick. I'm going to sew around the edges here as well. If you're not planning on sewing, you probably want to do a little bit of wet glue around the edges as well. So I'm just going to kind of put it off the edge just so that I don't get that white on the edge there. And I'm just going to glue on strips. And there's enough variety in these um, 
pages that you can just, you know, kind of grab whatever and it'll look good. So I'll just use this one. I have a green one. It's a little bit close there. It's a green one and maybe this guy or the next one. So just glue those on. Sometimes I use my brayer just to make sure the glue is spread well. Then I'm going to cut these off. These ones I will use again for another piece right away. And this is just scrap on this side. Might even use this little piece. I'll save that just in case I have need for a little thin piece. And this is what it looks like. So instant um, great background. So then I'm going to just do one of the same way. I'll do one of the tags just to show you how I do that. So just put some glue. You can put glue here or on the paper, whichever works for you. brown one that I started with the other one on there in the middle and I'll put maybe a thin green one here because they're kind of made as a, a collage pack you can do this and just get you know instant really great results like you don't really have to even <clears throat> need a little thicker one. You don't really have to think about it much. You just uh, you can just grab whatever and stick them on, and it will look good. So this is a great Sunday afternoon project. It's Sunday afternoon here, just to relax. After I finish this part of the video, when I do the rest of mine, I'm just going to put on some music. And enjoy my crafting time. So again, just cut off the bits on the edges like that. So there's the first step done. So what I'm going to do next, I think I'm actually going to round the corners. Just with my little quarter rounder punch here. You can leave them straight if you like. Totally up to you. And there's my other one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew. So before I sew, I'm just going to leave them for a few minutes just to let the glue dry because it's a good practice not to, uh, even though the, the glue stick is not that wet, it's, it's a good practice to let your glue dry before you sew around it. So I'm just going to pause the video now. I will wait for a couple minutes. I'll go sew and then I'll um, come back and show you um, the tags and the, the journal cards sewn and I'll show you the next step for these ones. So I'll be right back. Okay so I stitched around those two pieces and now I am going to um, use my cuddle bug. If you have a more modern <laughs> embosser you can use that. This is the one I still have. So I just make my little sandwich for my uh, machine that I use and I have two embossing folders I'm going to use. These are older ones as well. So there's this sort of swirly one there. So um, if you put the side that shows um, what it is or like it's for a cuddle bug, if you put your front towards that front then your embossing will be raised on the front of your project if that makes sense. It took me a while to to kind of realize that so I thought I would pass that on and just run that through 
And then you can't probably see much yet, but I'll show you the next step and you'll be able to see, you see it on the back better. Okay, and then for my other one, my smaller one, I'm just gonna use this other swirly one, different pattern. So stick that one in there. And run that one through. my desk. And there's the other one. So you can see it better on the back as well there. So then the next thing I want to do is do a bit of inking. So I think I'll just use my vintage photo Distress Oxide. I'm going to ink on the edges. Probably front and back. Sometimes I use these as pockets or something and then I don't really need the back ink. So sometimes I just leave it until I see if I'm going to need it or not. And then when I've got the edges inked, then I'll just put it flat and just really lightly go over the top. And what that does is it really brings out the, like you can see the pattern very clearly on that now. So I think that's really cool. And it, the other thing it does is it really um, um, kind of unifies the background because it's, you know, it's different collage pieces. And I think it even enhances probably the glue adhesion for, with the glue stick because I've never used, um, I've never used liquid glue on these and I've never had anything you know come apart or whatever and then just lay it down and see you can hardly see where those raised bits are and if you just go go really lightly over that and you can see them see like some in some of the areas you don't see it as much because the ink is a similar color but you can see like there and there quite clearly that that embossing there so then the next thing I want to do is just do a little bit of decorating so I'll just take my two pieces and sometimes they'll be a little bit curled you can put a book over them when you're done or something and and that will take care of that. I want kind of another bit of a larger one on there. Habitat type marshland. That actually looks good just like that. Um, I got a bird. Just going through all my little bits and pieces here. And these coordinate so well that it really you really don't have to think that hard. I'm going to put a smaller one on there. <clears throat> I think I like that better. You don't really have to think that hard about what what you're putting on these because they just really, really coordinate well. A green one. Specimens. That looks cool. So when you're doing this part, I always say don't really overthink it. Um, you know, all of this, this kit is coordinated, so it's pretty easy to put things together. I like to do an odd number of embellishments. So in this case, I am doing three. Sometimes you can do a little bit different depending on what the embellishments are. <clears throat> and then I usually like to do something that is a focal point. I like, especially a fussy cut. I think a fussy cut looks really good. And this here, fussy cuts anything with a kind of an uneven border. This, this I would not call fussy cut. I would call that just a piece of ephemera. Um, but you can use, you know, like the tea cards and stuff in the kit. They will look good as well. 
This is just kind of my way of doing it. So I'm just inking the edges of each of the, the pieces there. Then I will use my liquid glue for this, especially because I have <clears throat> little bumps. I like that 1882 there, but how am I going to get that to stay on there? Or part of it anyway. <laughs> uh, do I have something a little bit smaller? That would also work there. How about something like You know, I say don't fuss about it, but sometimes I do anyway. So here's just a little bus ticket sort of thing. So I just wanted, you know, I, I worked to get this background um, you know, the different pieces and the, the sewing and the, the embossing so I, I want it to show a little bit so I'm going to just stick that there and then so kind of a background ephemera piece is what I usually do um, it can have writing on it but not you know a real strong writing like that doesn't look like a focal point writing to me and then just do that one like that. Because there's kind of bumps in here, sometimes it takes a minute to just kind of get the, the glue to grab. And then more of a word that's um, that is more of a focal point word. So when you look at piece the first thing you usually see is the word the word or the phrase so you look at that and then you kind of see this and then this just really fades into the background but adds a little bit extra interest so there's one simple you can write on the back if you want you can put another piece of just a writing paper on the back to make it a little bit easier to write on the back but I made some of these um, kind of similar to that. <clears throat> I mean, the end looked kind of similar, but the process was totally different. Um, I used a master board for these ones, but, but just what I wanted to show you is after I'd finished this, I put a, a burlap tab and an eyelet in those ones. So I did a whole big set of those as well. So. Some of them are at the top, some of them are on the side. Um, oh, here's a little smaller one. I've used a few of them already. <clears throat> Pardon me. So you can definitely do something like that too, like put a put an eyelet and a, a bit of uh, fabric or something on there, but I think that is finished. So we'll do one more here. And then I'm just gonna put my background music on again and finish the rest of my my journal cards and tags and then I'll just show you a flip through of how I decorated them all at the end. Um, I wanted to stick this in underneath first didn't I? If you have a bigger tag you usually want a bigger focal point. When you're doing these kind of collages, you always want to overlap things. It always looks better. Um, like if you have a, a piece like this and you put one piece down here and <clears throat> one piece up here and then a label or something in the middle. I mean, it couldn't can work, but um, 
I guess it's what whatever's pleasing to your eye. I like the overlapping um, images, bits and pieces. Okay, and then I just need a. Uh, where do I want that? There's no, you know, one good place it can go. It looks good like that. It looks good like that. So there's my two pieces so far. So I'm going to work on the rest and I'll just be back in a second and show you a flip through of all of the pieces that I did. Be right back. All right. So I thought I would show you how, um, what I made so far. I actually haven't finished all of the, the bases that I made, but I thought I would um, stop at this point um, and just show you what I made. So just um, most of them are three, I should start with a different one. Most of them are three elements. So I did kind of a background-ish um, piece and then I would put the focal point on top of that and then I would usually put um, a label on top of that. So they're all overlapping. Some are only overlapping just a little bit but um, I think that's just pleasing to the eye and I kind of do it in a diagonal so I mean do whatever you um, what looks good to you but that's kind of my formula so did a little diagonal this goes over top of this this goes over top of this so there's that one and some of these tags I'm gonna I'll put a little eyelet there and and um, some kind of trim or something like that but um, I'm going to leave them at this point until I am ready to put them in a journal. This one I put two labels, but this one is kind of more of a background label because it's uh, not, you know, as as stark, I guess. And the butterfly is over top of there just a little bit. And this final label is over top of the butterfly. And again, in a diagonal form like that. Again, same thing. Love these fussy cuts. There's just... Um, everything just goes together so well you know I didn't even really have to think about you know which one um, I wanted on each of these I just you know kind of grabbed one of the background things grabbed a focal image grabbed a label sometimes I put one or two on there just to see and um, they all turned out good I like these background um, octagons they don't work for everything um, in my opinion, I have a little bit harder time using them sometimes, but they, when they pop, they pop. So there's a bird one. There's another one of those. Grow. Like really, really interesting um, fussy cuts in this package, in this kit. Really nice. There's a butterfly one with a calendar in the background and a number there. Here's another one. This one I couldn't fit a, the label I wanted um, right on the, all on the top, on the front, so I wrapped it around to the back, which still looks great. I could put a little bit of a stamp there, just a, a bold black stamp of something, a letter or number or something there. I may do that at some point. Um, here's this one. This one I kind of um, stacked two of the, like here's the background image and here's the label. So it's a little bit more of a cluster than a diagonal flow. Um, this one is actually more of a cluster too. It's got a, a vertical element, a horizontal element, and a diagonal element. So that looks good like that as well. And this one, actually I ended up putting four elements on there. However, the, the bird and the greenery kind of work together as a focal image. So I have the background and the focal image and then this on the other side. This one's kind of a little bit of a, a diagonal, kind of an L shape. You kind of want to have some sort of a, a flow usually in those. So. so that's what I came up with so far. And like I said, I've got um, more bases in here. I've got lots, lots, lots more of these... Uh, pieces that I've cut out so I will have fun putting more of these together but I thought I would share what I have now and uh, we'll see you soon. Blessings!